Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we were briefly introduced to the complementary number systems and there we also came to know about the representations of the same with respect to the different number systems. In this session, we will observe various examples of the complementary number systems. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will try to understand the working principle of the complementary number system through examples. Now, during our last session, we saw the formal representations of the diminished radix complement and the radix complement with respect to the different number systems. Today, we will dive a bit deeper. Let's begin with our very familiar decimal number system. Let's consider the decimal number 21. So, the negative magnitude of it would be minus 21, which can also be represented as 21 bar, right? Now, in case of decimals, since the base is 10, the diminished radix complement for this is actually called 10 minus 1, that is 9's complement. Let's determine the 9's complement of 21. Now, since 21 is a two-digit decimal number, following this convention of diminished radix complement, we can state that the 9th complement of 21 can be determined if from 10 squared minus 1, we subtract 21. Now, why 10 squared? Because decimal has the base 10 and 21 happens to be a two-digit number. Now, 10 squared is 100 and 100 minus 1 is 99. So, subtracting 21 from 99, that is the largest two-digit number in decimal, we obtain 78. Therefore, the 9th complement of 21 is 78. Now, the 10th complement of 21 can be determined by using the 9th complement of 21 and adding 1 to it. Now, we just obtained the 9th complement of 21, that is 78. Hence, the 10th complement or the radix complement of 21 will be 78 plus 1, that is 79. So, this is how we can obtain the diminished radix and radix complement in decimal. Now, let's observe the same in terms of binary number system as well. Consider a binary number 1011. So, the negative magnitude of 1011 can be stated as 1011 bar. Right? Now, in case of binary, since the base is 2, the diminished radix complement is also known as 2 minus 1, that is 1's complement. Now, the 1's complement of 1011 can be determined by subtracting 1011 from this. Since 1011 is a 4 digit binary number and being binary, the base is 2. Now, this actually is the decimal magnitude of the largest 4 bit binary number. Let me illustrate. 2 raised to the power 4 is 16 and 16 minus 1 is 15, right? Now, in binary, 15 means 4 ones. So, to come up with the ones complement of the value 1011, all we need to do is subtract each of these bits from 1, which happens to be the symbol with the highest magnitude of binary. If you recall, just now while determining 9's complement of 21, we subtracted 21 from 99. That is, we subtracted every digit of 21 from the symbol having the largest magnitude in decimal, that is 9. So, 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, 1 minus 1 would be 0 only. Then, 1 minus 0 is 1. And finally, 1 minus 1 is 0 again. So, the 1's complement of 1011 is 0100. Now, this is the conventional approach. Apart from this, there is a shortcut to it. In order to obtain the 1's complement, all we have to do is take the number and toggle every bit of that. That means, this one would be 0, then this one would also be 0, then a 0 will become 1, and at last, this one will become 0. So, instead of going through all these hassles, we can obtain the diminished radix complement of any binary number just by toggling the bits of it. Now, the radix or 2's complement of 1011 can be obtained by taking the 1's complement of 1011 and adding 1 to it. 
now one's complement of 1011 is 0100 now if we add 1 to it we will obtain 0101 now for determining 2's complement of any binary number there's also another trick let me show you that let's try to obtain the 2's complement of 1011100 now to do so we first need to take the number then from the least significant bit we should move towards the most significant bit now we ought to keep recording the bits until we come across one now once we come across one we will record that too however every bit after one towards the msb will now be toggled so the two's complement of 1011100 is 0100100 observe this one too from the lsb to msb this was the first one that we came across so we just kept it as it is and the bits afterwards got toggled one became zero zero became one then again one became zero so remember this in order to obtain the two's complement we will start from the lsb and keep recording the bits until we come across the first one we will keep that one as it is and thereafter we will keep toggling the remaining bits so that's all about the complementary number systems in binary let's now observe the same with respect to the hexadecimal number system let's take the hexadecimal number ce9a Therefore, the negative magnitude that is CE9A bar can be represented as the 15th complement of CE9A, which can be obtained if from 16 raised to the power 4 minus 1 we subtract CE9A. Now, this is actually the decimal value of the largest four digit hexadecimal number, which actually is FFFF, that is 4 Fs. So, 15th complement of CE9A is 4Fs minus CE9A. Now, remember, F in decimal is 15 and A is 10. So, 15 minus 10 is 5. Then, 15 minus 9 is 6. Now, since F is 15, then E is naturally 14. So, 15 minus 14 would be 1. And 15 minus 12, because if A is 10, B is 11 then c is definitely 12 so 15 minus 12 is 3 hence the 15th complement of ce9a is 3165 basically subtracting every digit from the largest hexadecimal symbol that is f now the 16th complement or the radix complement of ce9a can be obtained by taking the 15th complement of the same and adding one to it so we just obtained the 15th complement of CE9A that is 3165. Now adding 1 to it we obtain 3166 that is the radix complement of CE9A. So CE9A bar in diminished radix complement is 3165 and in radix complement it is 3166. So, in this session, we tried to acquire the understanding of the working principle of the complementary number system through examples. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn the logic behind the complementary number system. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.